JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 25th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD. Now we'll talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, le let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, lower against all but two of the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained only versus the British pound and the Canadian dollar, while it lost the most ground versus uh, the Kiwi, the Japanese yen and the Aussie. Now, at first glance, the strengthening of the Kiwi and the Aussie points to a risk on trading activity, but the fact that the yen was the second gainer in line points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. There, most uh, major uh, European and US indices uh, traded um, uh, in the red, but appetite improved uh, again during the Asian session uh, today. Now, the slide in the European and US equities may be owed to the miss in uh, in most of the of the preliminary PMI indices for May from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. The biggest disappointment was the tumble in the UK's services index to a 15 month low, specifically that index fell to 51.8 from 58.9, raising fears that a recession may be looming sooner than the Bank of England's uh, projections suggest. Remember that at its uh, latest gathering, the Bank of England warned of a recession excuse me, next year, prompting market participants to push back their bets with regards to future rate increases. It seems that those bets were pushed even further back yesterday, and that's why we saw the pound falling against uh, all the other major currencies. Yes, with inflation in the UK at uh, 9%, we do see the case for uh, the Bank of England to keep raising interest rates, but with recession fears intensifying, we believe that the pace will be much slower than expected a couple of months ago. Now, the main gainer among uh, the major uh, currencies was the New Zealand dollar, but not due to an improving market sentiment. The Kiwi surged overnight after the RBNZ raised interest rates by 50 basis points to 2% as was broadly anticipated, but also revised up its rate path projections. The bank now sees its official uh, cash rate hitting 3.95% by September 2023. And following uh, the more cautious language at last gathering, where officials judged that the rate path indicated in February was still appropriate, this is clearly a more hawkish stance, in our view, which combined with uh, the latest concerns over the performance of the US economy could help Kiwi dollar drift a bit higher. Uh, on the in, the with, in the technical picture, Kiwi dollar is already above a prior uh, downside resistance line and is now respecting a very short term upside uh, support line, so the technical picture also favors some further increases in uh, Kiwi dollar. Now, uh, as for later today, the spotlight is likely to fall on the minutes from the latest FOMC meeting. At that meeting, officials hiked by 50 basis points, but dismissed the case of a triple of a, of a triple hike in uh, June. However, since then, market participants came 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 in peace with the idea of a couple of more double hikes, especially at a time when other major central banks may not proceed that aggressively, and thus they decided to buy a few more dollars. In any case, the dollar pulled back again the last uh, few days due to economic slowdown fears. 
and with Fetcher, Powell noting in aftermath speeches that they will not hesitate to move more aggressively if inflation does not slow down as expected. It will be interesting to dig into the minutes to find out how many of his colleagues uh, share that same view. Now, if indeed most of them are willing to do more if needed to raise by more than 50 basis points at, uh, at, at the meeting, of, let's say after uh, summer, if inflation does not slow, then, the green, then Greenback may slow down its latest, uh, its latest downside uh, correction. But for now, given that uh, the market is anticipating, is fully pricing in and has been fully pricing in for the last few days, a 50 basis points hike in June and a 50 basis points hike in July, we believe that the dollar may not rever reverse, um, it's not the time for the US dollar to reverse no north now. It may outperform some, some uh, weak currencies, but um, uh, it could stay, let's say, under selling interest against the Kiwi because the Kiwi has, the arbitrage has just turned more hoggish, but with regards to the Fed, it remains to be seen uh, what happened uh, in the future. And also we have the economic slowdown fears in uh, the US. The minutes, even if, uh, come out, even if they come out a bit more hoggish than uh, the outcome of the previous meeting, um, they could be considered outdated because the meeting happened be before we have any signs of uh, an economic slowdown in the US. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can uh, subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.